Good morning and welcome to Sacred Awakenings. This is a virtual sanctuary for spiritual exploration. We come together in community to explore our spiritual lives together. And I'd like to let you know that we welcome back Dr. Gary Smith today. He is speaking on a topic titled Exploring Unconditional Love. And we also welcome back John and Lori Lefevre Johnson to provide our music for us today. Thank you for coming in and enjoy today's gathering. Take a moment to create sacred space and set our intention. However you feel moved to go within, take a moment to go within. Coming together, we create a collective divine heartbeat. We affirm truth and peace abide here. We gather to remember and recognize the divine mystery within. In our sacred circle, we honor the awakenings of each spirit who enters. Earth Teach Me, a Native American prayer. Earth, teach me quiet, as the grasses are still with new light. Earth, teach me suffering, as old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility, as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth, teach me caring as mothers nurture their young. Earth, teach me courage as the tree that stands alone. Earth, teach me limitation as the ant that crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom as the eagle that soars in the sky. Earth, teach me acceptance as the leaves that die each fall. Earth, teach me renewal as the seed that rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep with rain. Aho. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sacred Awakenings. I'm Dr. Gary Smith, and I'm here this morning to talk about exploring unconditional love. A couple of uh, weeks ago, in my last presentation, I shared in my presentation that my current philosophy, my current idea of things, what's it all about type of things, was that I really feel life is really about finding unconditional love for ourselves, growing unconditional love for ourselves within our life, within our expression of life, and then taking that out and sharing it with others, sharing how to get there for them, for their growth, for their understanding. And so afterwards, as I reflected on that, uh, I was thinking about unconditional love. What's that, what's that really feel like? What's that, what is that experience? I mean, a lot of times, a lot of these terms that we use when we're talking about uh, spirituality concepts and things like that, we, some of these get to be a little trite, a little bit hollow sounding. And when we talk about love, I mean, it's all kinds of love. Um, there's the love that I feel for my my wife, my children, grandchildren. It's a physical sensation. I, I've got my dear friends, I physically have the sensation. I really love them. Um, but as I think about unconditional love, no big sensation here. Um, yet I know I'm connected with them connected with an idea, but it's not a physical recognition of it. Now, there may be those of you out there that have that feeling, but as we are seeking these spiritual truths, um, and we do, we read books and we hear presentations and we hear people talking about unconditional love and, and universal love, divine love, and all these experiences, bliss and uh, enlightenment. And usually it's presented with great fanfare and great, um, like, yeah, I've, I've got it. And everybody else should experience it too. It's wonderful. It's everybody get there. And when we get there, it's not the same thing. And so, What's it feel like for people? What, how can we expect it to show up in our lives? Now, I have to apologize because this is going to be a little rambling. Uh, I decided not to write a script for this because I'm just more relaxed if I do it this way. So bear with me as we explore these ideas. And really, these ideas are really for... <clears throat> For those of you out there, for myself, that, again, I, I always challenge these ideas. I want to know a little bit more about these concepts and ideas. And what do they really mean? Because, again, we, with these books and presentations with these authors and, and these brilliant teachers, that oftentimes we hear it's so wonderful. I just recently listened to uh, an old audio uh, set from Wayne Dyer. I love Wayne Dyer, one of my favorite teachers. And, and but he always talks about and exudes this about people in his life. It's such a lovely person. Oh, I love this person. I feel so much love for them. And it's like, that's incredible. And, and there's a lot of people in my life I love and care about. I do love and I do care about. There's a lot of people I care about that I don't feel love for. People I feel love for, I have a physical sensation of love in my body that's like, yeah, I really love them. And there's other people I really care about and I care about them and I love them. But again, I don't really feel the physical sensation. It's just a deep caring, deep concern. And so, 
when we talk about unconditional love, for myself, I can stand in front of a mirror and say, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. And I feel connected with that very strongly. I do love and accept myself exactly as I am. But I don't have a feeling of love for myself. I have a feeling of acceptance. And I think acceptance becomes a very good synonym for unconditional love. It's what are we going to accept about ourselves and about others and about life situations is that unconditional love is really more of an acceptance of even things we don't like. And again, in concepts of spirituality that I hear bandied about, um, people avoid I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be negative. I shouldn't say that. I want to be negative. It's like, uh, okay, let's be realistic. And we don't have to like things. In my opinion, to, to really be authentic, you don't have to like everything. But you need to accept it. You accept something doesn't mean you like it or condone it. There's a lot of things I don't like or condone, but I'm willing to accept as that's just the way things are. That's a fact. And if it causes me stress, and again, I've said this a hundred times, it's how can I change the way I look at that so it doesn't cause me stress, that I can find acceptance for it. So I'm the one that needs to change, not it. So... In the concept of unconditional love, it's really unconditional acceptance of ourselves, of life, of people, places, and things. We have to find a way to accept that things are happening in life, in our lives, within ourselves. And trust me, there's a lot of my behaviors that could use improvement. And acceptance doesn't mean complacence. It doesn't mean stopping. It's mean I don't love and accept myself right now today and I'm stopping here. No, I've got plenty of room to grow. I love and accept to where I've gotten to now, but there's plenty of room to grow, plenty of room for me to change, plenty of room for me to evolve into. But in this moment, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. And over the years, I've given this as an exercise to many of my patients to stand in front of the mirror and say, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. Again, this puts us in present time consciousness, which is right now. This is life. This is where we're at. This is realistic. This is now. And a lot of them really even have a hard time saying, I like myself. I like and accept myself. A lot of people... You know, and sometimes it's the people that you least expect. The, I remember several examples of these, these. Both of these were ladies who just light up the room when they come in. And it's like they're, they're smiling and they, they always have nice things to say. And they're like so warm and personable. But on the inside, they're miserable because they can't love and accept themselves. When I talked about this concept, they just said, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, but you need to. You need to find a way to love and accept yourself to be able to move forward because it just turns into poison within you. So it's very important for, in my opinion, for people to really find that acceptance of themselves that we are perfect as we are in your life. We are less than ideal. Perfect in my vocabulary it doesn't mean ideal. It means in present time consciousness, we are as good as we are going to get right this moment. It doesn't mean there isn't room for growth and expansion, and better things. But in this moment, we're at the pinnacle of who we are. And our pinnacle may move up and down during the course of weeks, months, and years. But for the most part, in this moment, we're the pinnacle of who we can be. 
in to again to put that into a usable concept, I encourage people to think about themselves as loving, loving, caring people. Because most people will accept the fact that they're loving, caring people, although many of them judge themselves because they, uh, quite frankly, you know, sometimes I can be a real but <laughs> butthead. Um, and it's not because I intentionally want to. Um, maybe sometimes, but, but for the most part, I really don't want to be a butthead, you know, because I'm a loving, caring person. I really want to do things right. And so most people really are loving, caring people. And, and to appreciate that and to honor that within you, if you could do more, you would. If you're a loving, caring person, and again, I'm really sure that most of you are here, that if you could do more during a given day, you would do more. So when you lay your head on the pillow at night, what you've done has to be enough. So you're good enough. If you could be better, you would be better. But for some reason, you misunderstand yourself and how you fit into life. And you can always gain new understandings by learning through your errors, the things that don't work out so well. Those are to help us learn if we choose to through our failures. We choose to learn and grow. So we are loving, caring people. And if we could do more, we would. But if we fail to live up to our expectations, it's because on some level, we needed to know more about ourselves and how we fit into life. So loving, caring people, able to accept ourselves exactly as we are. Acceptance of ourselves, of our failures, acceptance of our human frailties, allowing ourselves to be human, allowing ourselves to relax into who we are, and of course, grow along the way. And growth is going to be automatically happening as we accept ourselves and choose to grow, choose to learn from our mistakes and our failures. So caring, loving people, if you could do more, you would. Again, I know I've harped harp on this idea before because I think it's a really important concept because a lot of times living up to spiritual concepts as given to us by our churches and our parents and our teachers and whoever, sometimes becomes a hard road to hope. It becomes because there's so many ideas of what we need to do to be acceptable unto God, unto the Great Spirit, unto this understanding of life that we have to work at it. And that concept of working on ourselves, a lot of people, when they work on their spirituality so much, it's like, there's a part of that that runs me the wrong way because at some point that becomes a, a negative. It's like, I'm not good enough. I have to work harder on my spirituality. Why don't you just accept where you're at for the time being? Enjoy the spirituality you have. Express the spirituality you have in this moment. That, again, working on these things is akin to a lack mindset to me. And again, that is a judgment, a non-acceptance that we're not good enough. We always have to be working on ourselves. It's like, no, let's just accept ourselves that the work will happen regardless because we're loving, caring people. We're going to grow and evolve. We don't have to work at it. And that have to is victim speak in my vocabulary. And it's a choice to grow and learn. I choose to grow and learn. I'm choosing to grow and learn. I'm choosing to become better, but in this moment, I'm good enough. 
I'm acceptable enough. I'm spiritual enough. I accept myself now. Unconditional love. I think that was just it. Unconditional love is accepting that I'm human. Accepting that I'm growing. That I'm evolving. I'm changing. But in this moment, warts and all, I'm still accepting that I'm still good enough. And I'm a loving, caring person. If I could do more, I would. And if I fail to live up to my expectations of what that spiritual human being should be, it's because I haven't watched them yet. And I'm smart and I can learn. So therefore, I'm going to move forward through my knowledge, through my experience of being human to become more of what I already am, which is a loving, caring person. What do we need besides that? Except to become loving, caring people, to move into that with greater acceptance, accepting that we can be enough now, not in the future. Present time consciousness. I am spiritual now. I am spiritual now. And building on that I am statement, I've come up with this idea recently because it's a powerful statement, of course, and many people use it to the detriment. When I'm sick and tired of this stuff. Well, you become sick and tired if you keep saying I am sick and tired. So I encourage you to say I am strong and healthy. But there's a part of your mind sometimes your subconscious that says, yeah, but what about all this illness going on inside me? That makes us deny that we're not quite buy into that statement. So I've started adding the, despite the evidence, I am strong and healthy. So that allows your subconscious mind to accept that I'm being realistic here, that I have evidence in my awareness that's telling me I'm not strong and healthy. But I like to stay and affirm that I am strong and healthy. In spite of the evidence, I am strong and healthy. I am strong and healthy. In spite of the evidence that I'm holding secretly in my mind, I am strong and healthy. In spite of the evidence, I am strong and healthy. In spite of the evidence, I am lovable. In spite of the evidence... I am growing. In spite of the evidence, I am spiritual enough now in this moment. In spite of the evidence that I hold secretly between my ears, I am acceptable enough. I am loved by God. In spite of the evidence, I am lovable. In spite of the evidence, I am happy. In spite of the evidence, I am healthy and strong. I like that. Because I'm being realistic. Because many of us, but I'm one of them, holds these ideas that work against us. Because we have evidence against us that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy enough, we're not acceptable enough. We have these ideas that we've held for a long time and maybe it's been reinforced by society or someone that we're not able to self-validate enough to get past them. So we get stuck with these ideas. So in spite of the evidence, I am healthy and strong. In spite of the evidence, I'm lovable. I am lovable. I am loving. I am tremendous. I am spiritual. In spite of the evidence, I am spirit. In spite of the evidence, I am happy. So, 
we grant our ego, we grant our subconscious a, a little bit of what we believe to be true and affirm ourselves to be better than that, the I am. That is all. I am, I am that I am that is God. I am healthy and strong. I am lovable. I am whole. In spite of the evidence, I am totally and perfectly whole. I am accepted. In spite of the evidence, I am accepted. I am loving and strong. So, Unconditional love may ring hollow sometimes, may confound us because sometimes it's hard to equate, to relate to love that's unconditional because we think of it in terms of that feeling of love that we feel for people in our lives, where we don't have to feel that physical feeling to have the experience of unconditional love, which is unconditional acceptance of ourselves, of life, of people, places, things around us that we don't even like. And we don't have to like them to accept them. We have to accept them for the reality of their existence. For the spirit within them that is misunderstood, that is mal-expressed, that is antisocial, whatever it is, we need to step past our judgment of that and accept it as real and to help them as we can. We can't help everybody. Not everybody wants to be helped. But when we have the opportunity, we help as we can. Help share our understanding of unconditional love. The love that we want to engender within ourselves, of love of self-acceptance, that we're trying to engender and grow within ourselves, and we want to share that with others by being an example as best we can, of unconditional love and acceptance. So, we find ourselves with these concepts in spirituality, and sometimes we need to ask ourselves, really, what is our expectations? What, again, because we have these expectations, a lot of times it's really from the books, the lectures, the, the, the ideas we get from other people that it should be a certain way, dramatic and outstanding. Um, like the concept of bliss. Again, bliss is something that it's like happiness. Happiness comes and goes. It's experience. It's just transitory. No, I was blessed with the experience of bliss that lasted two and a half, three weeks, uh, a number of years ago. It was during the Christmas season. It was like amazing. Uh, it was just a total connection with the whole Christmas holiday. Um, and I, it was just like everything flowed. Um, I, the gift, the giving, the finding the gifts, buying the gifts. I'd go to the mall and be a parking space right front of the door practically um just and i just felt this great connection 
with the people in my life and just it just flows beautiful in it and again it lasted two and a half three weeks of this experience and i'm glad i had that experience but it really didn't it was like kind of like a gift did it really add to my to my overall knowledge to add to my is it a place i want to stay at mm, yeah it'd be great sort of kind of uh, but again um, the struggle of life is a place where we learn more i think it's kind of like the bliss was like uh, great but I'm not challenged. There's no challenge there. And we grow through the challenge. In fact, I call it the friction of life. I think we human beings need the friction of life to really grow, to really stretch ourselves, to really be able to cope with stresses, cope with the sadness of life. And life can be sad. Life can be harsh. It can be ugly. <laughs> In many ways, it's ugly just turn on the news but it's also got a beautiful beautiful aspect to it beautiful people loving relationships beautiful world there's so many places of beauty in the city of Toledo when you open your eyes and see them and they can be right in front of you all the time you never see them I was driving down Stearns Road um, I drive down Stearns Road thousands of times and this one morning this, the light was just right where it lit up this tree that I've driven past like I said hundreds and hundreds of times and it was majestic it was beautifully majestic the way it was lit by the sunlight the rising sunlight and it's always been there. The majesty of it's been hidden, but it's always there. So how do we look at these things? How do we experience these things? How do we find ourselves with these things? And again, I like to challenge these ideas because sometimes they're right in front of us and we fail to look at them just right. And sometimes we put importance on some ideas that we miss the overall picture of them and seeking our spirituality. And I think unconditional love is kind of like that to some degree. What do we mean by it? What's our real experience of it? Maybe we're experiencing we don't know it. And so it's like an enlightenment. When are we enlightened? Well, we're enlightened a number of times. Every time we get a new idea that moves us forward in life, and forward in our understanding. That's enlightenment. Is it consistently, oh, I'm sitting around, I'm all enlightened, thank you very much. You know, it's, maybe it's some of that for some people. You know, for me, it's moments here and moments there. And sometimes I'm in the dark as much as anybody. But I have moments where I feel like, truly feel enlightened about things because the secret's been revealed to some degree. I get another glimpse of it. It becomes richer and more dear to me. My life becomes more enriched by these understandings and by my misunderstandings when I can learn from them. So when we look on ourselves and look at how do we truly feel about ourselves? Can we find that acceptance, that unconditional acceptance that we need is love? I love and accept myself exactly as I am right now, in this time, in this place. Right now, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. So, thank you for your kind attention. And in a few moments, we're going to move into 
the reflection of these ideas. So allow yourselves to get comfortable and close your eyes if you wish. So reflecting as we breathe and relax. Reflecting as we breathe and relax on these ideas of unconditional love. Finding acceptance for ourselves now in this time, this place. And acceptance again doesn't mean liking ourselves entirely. Liking, we don't have to like all our behaviors, what we do, what we say, but we need to accept ourselves exactly as we are. In accepting ourselves, we ask ourselves to love ourselves. Love and acceptance. So it's just breathing in that love and acceptance. And just breathing in that love and acceptance. The idea that we are good enough, that we're acceptable, in spite of the evidence that we hold against ourselves, we are lovable, we are acceptable. In spite of the evidence, I am lovable. I am acceptable in spite of the evidence. I am lovable. I am accepted exactly as I am. In spite of the evidence, I am healthy and strong. In spite of the evidence, I am abundant in thought, word, and deed. In spite of the evidence, I am strong and healthy. I am lovable. I am whole. In spite of the evidence, I am perfect now in this time and place. Breathing in these thoughts and ideas, letting them mingle with each and every cell of your body. Breathing in these thoughts and ideas and letting them mingle with each and every cell of your body. Bringing in these loving thoughts and ideas into every cell of your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Imagine these thoughts and ideas penetrating every molecule of every cell of your body. These living thoughts and ideas penetrating every atom of every molecule of every cell of your body. Breathing in these thoughts and ideas, letting the warmth of them radiate from the very core of your being out to this room that you find yourself in. Filling up this room with the warmth of these ideas, the warmth of this love that you hold for yourself and for the rest of the world, for the people, places, and things around you that you may not even like, but you know that you accept them as fully as you can from the open, loving heart that you hold on your chest. Breathing in these ideas, letting it penetrate every cell of your body, each and every molecule of every cell of your body, each and every atom of every molecule of your cell of your body, and letting this warmth radiate out from your body filling up the room that you find yourself in, filling up the 
building of the room that you find yourself in. Radiating out into the world. These loving thoughts and ideas about yourself and about your life. That in spite of the evidence, is a wonderful life. In spite of the evidence, is a perfect life. In spite of the evidence, a perfect life. Breathing in, relaxing with these ideas deeper and deeper, penetrating to the very core of your being, radiating out into the world with loving kindness for yourself and for the world around you. Feel it radiate from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Vibrate with an intensity that can only truly come from spirit. Feeling it fill you up with the knowledge, with the image of your divineness, your very divine being radiating out into the world. Breathing in. Love. Breathing in acceptance, breathing in the knowledge that you hold about life and seeing it grow and blossom into a beautiful flower. As you grow into your higher self, your higher awareness, the higher expression of yourself exactly as it needs to be. Be with that idea for a moment. As we slowly bring ourselves back into the meeting, as we bring our awareness back into the meeting at this time, allowing this knowledge to come back with you into your waking awareness, this feeling of connection with all of life. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Fall on my ear 
let me now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see open my heart and illumine me speak In considering our message, our music, our meditation, as well as all the educational opportunities that Sacred Awakenings is developing for the community, we ask that you consider a love offering as an energy exchange at our website, sacredawakenings.org. Any donation over $1 is eligible for our membership, which includes private access to various groups, workshops, and classes focused on furthering our spiritual exploration as a community. Please join me in this blessing. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love, through us, blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. May your generosity you share with Sacred Awakenings continue to bless you with divine abundance and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for guiding us on that beautiful exploration of a very special type of love, unconditional love. And thank you, John and Lori, as always, for bringing us together with ourselves and each other in celebration of music. Thanks for sharing your special talent with us here at Sacred Awakenings. And after our closing prayer, we're coming back, if you wish, to join us for a chat, maybe uh, sit within that stillness, that energy of the the gathering, and and feel free to connect that way. There's never an obligation to share um, in that special time after the gathering. But please know that we do do this. We stay live on Zoom for a while, connecting with our speaker, connecting with our musicians, and connecting with each other in the very many ways that we all connect intuitively. And I wanna also remind you that you can listen to our podcast and get just today's message, or you can watch the whole Sunday gathering or any other Sunday gatherings that you may have missed on our YouTube channel. You can also find this in our private member network, and you can also find all of these on Facebook as well. So thank you for joining us and many, many sacred awakenings. Now for our closing blessing. O Heavenly Divine, sacred source of life, open my eyes to see your divine presence in all of life. Open my ears to hear your guidance as I move through the maze of life. Lead me to act in the highest good of all concern. Open up my heart to set aside judgment, to find the innocence, the clarity in all things. Help me realize greater gratitude for the divine blessings bestowed upon me. See within my heart the pure intention to serve the glory of the divine in each moment of the day. Thy will be done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen.
tell the story. Sing, sing a song of joy for mankind in his glory. One mighty voice that will bring a sound that will ring forevermore. Then sing a song of joy for love and understanding. And now, if you'd like, take a few moments for a short break. Make yourself comfortable, and we'll join together here in just a few moments, and we'll come together in conversation and contemplation, um, however it feels best for you. Namaste.